Have you checked the children? <laughs> Long days and pleasant nights, fellow travelers along the path of the beam. I am known on this level of the tower as Jaime and Fuego, and if it please you, join me here for a bit of palaver on Hail to Stephen King. That's right, Psy King, uh, El Rey, all of the different silly names that I have uh, come up with him over the years, but there is nothing silly about the subject matter that we are going to be very briefly tackling today, and that's because it... It is incredibly difficult to give proper thoughts on a series uh, that is in solely podcast form. And uh, as I did when I was initially talking about the third season of uh, Castle Rock, which was done as an unofficial podcast, like sequel sort of situation, um, I had mixed feelings about that one. I thought it was okay enough, and dare I say, Unfortunately, I am kind of falling into a similar camp when it comes to Strawberry Spring. Now, as far as just the grandiosity and the, the spectacle and, of course, the amount of episodes, this is a little bit different, which was based on a Stephen King short story that was initially published in 68 in uh, Ubris? Hubris? I want to double check and make sure. Yes, uh, in the fall magazine of uh, 1968, Ubris. And so... Uh, it was initially collected for like mass market with the Night Shift collection that came out in February of 1978. And so this is one that it, it feels, and it always felt, in all honesty, if I'm to give some proper clarification, it always felt very much like Psy King as a kid trying to write something, which he was. He was in his late teens, early 20s when he came up with this, and yet the term Strawberry Spring is very much like, you know, how, how Indian summer is where in the fall you think there's going to be like, you know, warmer, nicer weather, that a Strawberry Spring is apparently that same sort of like fake out sort of shit. And uh, I, t since I'm in the desert, it's a drastically different situation in comparison with all of those peeps who live back east and deal with these weird fluctuations of, of weather and stuff like that. So, yes, Indian summer is where in the fall, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, just heap on me in the comments below if I'm totally wrong, um, where you get some warmth after things have cooled down. And then, once again, uh, with a strawberry spring, it's where you think things are going to warm up, and there's often fog that is entailed with this, and yet it's like, nope, sorry, no dice, homie, you are going to go back to the chill of the cold. And so uh, there is, in this particular story at least, a killer that decides to do his menacing madness in those particular times where there, it's, it's like, you know, you've heard the term under the cloud of night. Well, this is even bigger than that in the fact that, yeah, uh, he is doing it in where there's way more uh, to conceal his nastiness, or his or her nastiness. I'm not trying to you know, uh, to just make some sort of disparaging uh, that, hey, only men can kill. Hey, uh, the American Psycho sequel. I mean, uh, Jackie proved to all of us that she can murder with a menace, and so that's a thing. But uh, as, as far as the story goes, though, yeah, it's a either a reoccurring killer with this strawberry spring fog and, you know, the, the concealing that it entails, or it's a copycat. And so that was, at least for me, until you get the revelation of sorts at the back half of the short story, something that I always found relatively fascinating was that, okay, was, was person the initial, like, be-all, end-all, kill-all, so to speak, or was it something drastically different? And the copycat aspect, and there were, for the most iconic killers, goddamn, man, they have always had their, I don't know, reverent aficionado, like, those who revere them and want to, like, continue their work. It's sick. It's disgusting. It is what it is. But, um, in any event, as I have meandered around, and that's because of the fact that this is really 
tough for me to have a lot to say about this, especially without a visual aspect and whatever, but the audio dramas, as I used to call them, have found a significant resurgence. And I did talk about this, uh, you know, massively with Castle Rock, and yet the, the fact that those three episodes of Castle Rock Season 3, uh, shout out to the Losers Club, obviously, were such a big thing, uh, yeah, I can't say that I am shocked in any way, shape, or form that we have an eight episode, yeah, so eight 30 plus minute episodes of a show that is not only adapting Strawberry Spring, but expanding upon it. And I've said various times here on Hail to Stephen King, you know, almost 300 episodes strong here on The Horror Show, and obviously Benvenidos and welcome as you are uh, making your way through all of this with me, but um, yeah, audio dramas, as I used to call them back in the day, because I was listening to all of the Star Wars stuff, uh, and there were various bits for Shadows of the Empire, and then all of the expanded, now I guess it's called Legends, you know, as, as far as all of that goes, but nonetheless, I was always a fan of where, as opposed to somebody reading me something, you heard sound effects, you had multiple voice actors, you had that sort of distinction and interesting factor, and this brings it in spades, but I don't I don't necessarily know how big of a fan I am of it. And so uh, at, at this point, they are calling them podcasts because of the fact that and then all the young kids, you know, they're like, oh, it's a podcast. And you're like, oh, but it's a scripted podcast. Yeah, that's the distinguishing sort of factor that we have now. So I guess that's fine and whatnot. But um, I was not like over the moon about the third season of Castle Rock and... I guess I'm kind of in a similar situation about this one. Uh, Strawberry Spring, first time that the story has been, I, I, I think it was a Dollar Baby for a while, which if you're not uh, familiar with Dollar Babies, that's where Psy King essentially will license out the rights for somebody to adapt a story of his for a single doll hair. Yeah, that's right. And I think Strawberry Spring was on there for a while, and I know I've seen versions of uh, both this and uh, I... I know what you need, or I, I have what you need, or whatever, that's another one from the Night Shift collection. But yeah, as far as those like unsung, unspoken, and less talked about sort of Psy King stories, this is most definitely one of them. And so I would imagine that's why they were able to get the rights and just uh, like forge forward. And uh, just to give like the proper credence and stuff like that. So Audio Up Media, partnered with iHeartMedia, and I know that those are two of the most prominent names in, in podcasting, and not just as far as scripted podcasting, we are talking about those who cover daily events, we're talking sports, we're talking all of that different shit, and yeah, man, I, and, and I use the shite word specifically, <laughs> I suppose, and yet I do, I'm, I'm like Psy King, I love sports, and that's all totally fine, but uh, this is being prominently produced, and the final episode airs this upcoming Wednesday, so tomorrow, mañana, way, and uh, very cool in that regard, but, so, yeah, uh, Lee Metzger, who was behind Legendary and The Voice, I'm, I think The Voice is a competition sort of show, if I'm not mistaken, that is very similar to uh, what, uh, American Idol? I don't know. I've never watched any of those shows, but so key point being the fact that Lee is a prominent producer of the, the kind of content that people just like, yeah, they eat it up, man. They are all about it. And so he is, uh, he is the main just like focal point behind this. And then you also have a relatively uh, like noteworthy sort of voice actors and stuff. And uh, yeah, Sydney Sweeney, uh, mm, she's okay. Garrett Headland, he's all right. Uh, Mila Ventimiglia, <laughs> I guess. And so as far as the IMDB goes, they are all listed in their roles throughout the first few episodes, but Ken Marino, man, is the dude that I was like so stoked to see a part of this process because he is so funny, whether it's Wet Hot American Summer or, uh, you know, the one with Adam Scott that he did where 
if I can't remember it, it's not gonna make any sort of importance. But yeah, man, Ken is versatile in my estimation in the fact that yes, he can be funny and well, he's always funny in my estimation. Uh, Party Down, I think the name of the show was, it, it always comes to me uh, as opposed to giving dead air in like a cut edit. I, I always wanna try to get to it myself as opposed to consulting. And so that was cool. But Ken Marino is great in this as the captain for the few bits that that we get him and so yeah that's uh that's about where we're at and maybe it's a slight aversion to this sort of storytelling and once again i love the 90s audio dramas that i was so so about but i don't necessarily think that this new breed is necessarily like they're they're hitting all of the different notches you know you've got ambient uh, you know kind of score behind you've got sound effects you you can hear the crickets chirping you can then hear the movement of characters and whatever but i think really more so than anything it's the production of the voices and the the spoken word and it's so upfront as a you know person who has an audio production degree it's so in your face and almost like it doesn't have the grittiness that I think is like necessarily just important for this sort of storytelling. And I, I will, I guess at this particular point say outright that I was not the biggest fan of Strawberry Spring. Now, granted, I enjoyed the expansion of the story, but the the voice acting was one of my biggest concedes with regards to this i thought and, and and it was not even so much the performance although with our male lead uh, yeah it was most definitely about the performance i didn't like his cadence i was not particularly fond of uh the enunciation and everything and same with his uh, you know i'm gonna walk you to class and all that different stuff and his his love interest at least in the earlier episodes and stuff like that i just I was not super big on it. I thought that they were being directed, and that's where it has to be so distinctively different, right? In the fact that if you are actually looking at a camera, if you are able to give that sort of, uh, you know, performance, so to speak, I, I think it has to be kind of a pivot. It has to be kind of an alteration if you're gonna be doing something where as opposed to looking at a camera, as opposed to all of the inflection that is entailed with that, if you're just talking to a microphone and that's all that you are doing. And I, aside from Ken Marino, you know, and maybe that's some sort of like, like distinctively, uh, I don't know, preferential sort of outlook, but yeah, the rest of the cast, you know, from the team at the news place to, you know, the love interest to everything. And even when the girl is being killed at the very beginning of the first episode, I, I wasn't frightened, you know? There was a very lack of being compelled. Uh, and yeah, some people, they, they are much more reliant, I suppose, on their, their physical performance, as opposed, and, and especially in something like this, where it is a horror story. You know, and, and for that reason, I think that a lot of horror performers, perhaps they are resilient based on their physicality, but when it comes specifically to them having to just read lines and make it compelling and all of that stuff, maybe that's where they fall short. And once again, this is just personal opinion. As I have said countless times on this, art is subjective. I was talking with Cecil about this just the other day when we were discussing, and uh, tomorrow we're gonna see uh, Halloween Kills, and so I, I don't know where the performances are gonna lie within, <sighs> within all of that, but I mean, I, I appreciate the ambition. Anything Psy King has to be covered, man. I mean, it's, uh, it's that sort of, uh, you know, completest aspect, I suppose, within my regard. And for that reason, yeah, you have to look at uh, what I'm going to be looking at in two weeks, you know, which is the Chapel Wait show, even though I haven't been the biggest fan of it. Uh, I, I still try my damnedest to look at these things with an open mind and an open heart and a 
receptive sort of uh, you know vernacular and yeah, just to double down that story though, real quick before, because uh, <laughs> I've already been going uh, like 15 minutes and yet I don't feel like I've said that much. I've been more so critiquing the aspect of audio dramas and what they have become as opposed to what they were and so on. And yeah, so you have said the uh, journalist who in 1968, and, and yet this is primarily taking place in 78. So that's the one thing to you know, give you uh, just proper credence and information about. But yeah, so he remembers the Indian summer from like a decade or so before and how with that coming back and the murders coming back, it's all synonymous and I, I don't know how old Homeboy is. <laughs> if he was in college 10 years before, Psy King has a very amusing sort of uh, an inclination and tendency to have older men with younger women, then I, I guess he's living out his fantasies. So that's totally fine, whatever. You know, I've never uh, dipped below like, you know, five, five, seven years. Anyway, that is not uh, my personal life that I'm trying to uh, go into expulsions about. Um, love Catherine Layden, she's amazing. Uh, the lady cat, as I call her. But yeah, man, uh, so you have somebody who is at the college and the love interest, at least in the first episode, and then you have our resident writer, and of course, Psy King always with a writer, and so all of these little, like, kind of notches are being, like, kicked in the gear, and he's remembering one thing, remembering another thing, remembering uh, some of the women and the uh, particulars of why they were targeted and and everything so i mean dare i say i feel like it's overproduced and i felt the same way about the castle rock season three and so that's at least the correlation that i can maintain within this i don't listen to a lot of new audio dramas though so i'm not sure if this is the new norm and i just have my head in the sand so to speak but yeah i I thought the voice acting was just a wee bit much. I felt like it was overproduced as opposed to having that intimacy that you would, you know, kind of think. I mean, granted, with Star Wars and you're hearing like blasters going and lightsabers like pew and stuff like that, it's a little bit different. But um, yeah, I, at least thus far, the last episode is coming out tomorrow, as I said, Wednesday. I was not the biggest fan of Strawberry Spring, but the. <laughs> At the end of the day, more Stephen King adaptations, the better is the one thing that I can say. And especially in 2021, where I feel like Psy King has kind of fallen off the radar just a wee bit, if we're going to be fair about it. So 2017, obviously the return of the King, as I talked about it. And then 2019 pre-pandemic with the sequel to it coming out and various other things, I mean, but... This year has been like, oh, we had two new book releases, one of which was awesome, the other was kind of ho-hum, in my estimation. And uh, aside from that, I, I feel like the spark is waning to the slightest degree. But then again, you know, when we see Salem's Lot next year and whatever else of those smaller projects finally find their fruition, hopefully, fingers firmly crossed. Um, I don't know, you can always see a king just reinvigoration because of the fact that he is so prolific and so brilliant. And yeah, uh, check out Strawberry Spring and make up your own mind. That's the biggest thing that I have to say. You guys always know when I am relatively scant about stuff and I'm not, I, I'm not the type to just tear something apart. It's not who I am as a person. I will focus upon as much positive as I uh, potentially can and that's kind of where I'm at with this one, where I did, I definitely, I was so far from loving it. I didn't hate it, but it just didn't, uh, I don't know, it wasn't necessarily doing it for me. And yet, once again, I love audio dramas, as I will still eternally call them, as opposed to scripted podcasts. But if you want to make up your own mind as far as this goes, check out uh, where wherever podcasts are uh, available for you, whether it's Spotify, whether it's iHeartRadio, whether it's, uh, you know, Audible, they are all at your fingertips, your, your earsies, your, your listening sort of situations. And so, um, yeah, there's uh, the eighth and final episode dropping tomorrow on Wednesday, the... 
Uh, boy, I want to say the 13th, if I'm not mistaken. Wednesday the 13th. Ha! How funny is that? So, that's kind of cool. But, yeah, I just... As far as the interplay between the actors, it felt like they weren't even necessarily in the same room together. And I would imagine that's probably a uh, pretty common place when it comes to these sort of situations where, yeah, everybody is recording their, their vocals, their, their voice work separately. And, uh, yeah, it just didn't have... Just didn't have the the life and the vibrance that I was really expecting, and uh, down later episodes, unfortunately, did not uh, just reinstill my faith. But hey, check it out for yourself. Make up your own mind, as I all too often say. So, I extend a grande gracias. I've been Jaime Fuego, and you can find more on all social media sectors like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, here on YouTube. And yes, there is more stuff coming to the Infoigotainment YouTube, uh, just, uh, you know, stay tuned proper. It's It's been very much the weird juggling act of trying to figure out how October goes with the horror show, and we have a convention, I'm playing a concert, and just all of these other, uh, you know, uh, balls up in the air, in place, and so on and so forth. And so that is certainly cool. Just a reminder, at the beginning, of November. So the first, uh, first, I'll be gone till November, I'll be gone till, the first November in, uh, the first Tuesday in November is going to be none other than, that's right, you see it up there, Needful Things, man, and uh, yeah, it's a book that I have not revisited in quite some time, uh, who is about to revisit it though, if he hasn't put it up already, is Mike Kearns, my homeboy, from Mike's book reviews, he is doing that. I know he's like just all Dune everything right now, and I'm about to start Dune myself for the reread, which is pretty exciting. But as far as Hail to Stephen King goes, yes, that is right. We are doing Needful Things as the October book of the month for its 20, uh, excuse me, 30 year anniversary. Holy hell, that is most definitely something. And uh, yeah, uh, look forward to that first Tuesday of November. Um, to, yeah, aside from all of that uh, silliness, shenanigans, so on and so forth, whatsoever, I just want to extend a grande gracias once more to all of you that uh, time in fuego here and until the Wheel of Ka comes around once more. Hasta luego, sin amigos, constant viewers and readers alike say thank you. I'm hopeful that we get to share more of this palaver sooner rather than later and that we have been well met. And, of course, until that instance occurs, remember to stay scared and read Stephen King. Even if we're talking about listening to loosely based Stephen King. It's okay. <laughs>